371. Today we are focusing in Touch Designer on crossfaders, a uh, little slider, um, kind of little slider controllers and button controllers. And we're going to use it to create a simple movie crossfade or video crossfade system you might use in a live situation. Um, and I'm also going to show you how to control a few things like, you know, some of the different um, texture operators. You can control a levels object or the speed of a video playback. Um, and then we're going to use the buttons to be able to like start and stop the videos as well. So that's what you're looking at right now. I have a lovely little crossfader set up. These are the two movies I'm fading between movie one and movie two. The top one is like a slow motion of my daughter um, walking and the other one is this water layer. This is actually the crossfader that's controlling. This is the little slider here that's controlling what's called a cross TOP. So I can move this back and forth and you can see one clip. Let me start it because I have a button there. So once it's playing and then I can fade that and go to the other one. So you could see this in a live scenario. It's like, okay, this is the video that's currently up being mapped maybe through Cantan Mapper or maybe you're just going full screen. And then you go back and change your video for the other clip and then slide back in again. It's just like a little crossfade slider for DJs. VJs have been using these for years. You can map this to a little MIDI controller if you want to as well. But these sliders and buttons just give you an actual like interface option versus having to like, you know, click on the actual cross object and then come up and use this little tiny slider. I can make big ones, which just means I mean, I can make setups for folks with an actual like user interface that maybe don't understand how everything's working in here uh, and they're able to control it, which can work really well when you're collaborating with others that maybe don't understand touch designer as well as you do. Like I said, I also added a control slider up here. This actually controls the, uh, let me slide it over so you can see it. This controls the uh, contrast level on a level TOP that I've added to the movie file one in there. So here you can see in between movie file one and the cross TOP, I have a level in there. And this is little control slider is controlling the contrast on that. And then this one over here is actually controlling the speed of playback. So if I slow that way down, I can like incrementally bring that down so the video is barely, it gets a little choppy, obviously, but then I can speed it back up and I can have a little playback speed control there, which is really fun. And last but not least, I created a button with an on off just to stop the clip, start the clip, stop the clip, start the clip. So some simple scenarios of how you might use a slider to create a crossfader. That's the key for this particular um, lesson, but then how a button can come in there for little binary situations and how you can use these sliders for all sorts of different situations, controlling different image filters, speed controls, things like that. So how did I do it? Well, let's start from scratch. How about that? All right, let me do a, let me close this. Let me go ahead and quit and open up a new touch designer. Bear with me. There it is. Oh, no, 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 wrong one. There we go. And you can make these as complex as you want. You could add, you know, multiple sliders. You could have 10 different video slots you want to be able to move between, um, depending on how many screens you're working with, all that fun stuff, right? All right, so I'm going to go ahead and just delete most of that. I'll go ahead and keep my movie file in for right now, and I'm going to go ahead and copy and paste that. And I'm going to go ahead and just load a couple of clips that I'll actually be able to see some differences in. So I've got some videos on my desktop. Let's go ahead and grab, um, I think that one will be a good one, be able to see some good video difference going on there. And then for this one, That one should work pretty well. Oh, it didn't like that one for some reason. Let me grab that again. Huh. That's odd. I'm not sure why it's not accepting that, but let's go ahead and grab, uh, let me duplicate this again. There we go. I don't know. Didn't like that clip for some reason. But that's fine. These two will work. All right. So first thing maybe we want to go ahead and do is let's add in the cross TOP, right? So I'm going to right click here and I'm going to come in here and look for that. 
and there it is cross into the top and put it right here so there's one clip here's the other clip and now you can see as I control the cross there we go now I'm just gonna go ahead and add a null object add an operator here and I'm gonna add a null just to have a an easy thing for me to be able to add into Canten Mapper. Just, you know, nulls are like an empty container that you can run whatever you want into. And then I'm going to activate the nulls display so we can see the whole thing in the background, right? So that's that little blue button there. If I turn it off, we see just the network. And now if I go back to the cross, we can see how I can get this lovely blend. You know, I can use it just as a fade, a cross fade, or I can literally make some like mixes of imagery too, which is kind of fun, right? So there we go. These little warnings are just because my original clips, I think, are 1920 by 1080, and we're maxed out at um, 1280 by 1280 with the uh, non-pro version of Touch Designer. But let's go ahead and bring that back here. So how do we start to add in some slider control? Well, the first one I'm going to do that to is the cross here. So just for clarity's sake, I'm going to go ahead and turn off the display. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, let's hit Tab. Now, to find sliders and buttons, they're under the, the comp tab there. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go grab a slider. Here it is. And I'm going to drop that in. And hand in hand with a slider, you'll see here in a second, I'm going to go ahead and right click on that. Uh, if you right click on the sliders output there, it'll automatically take you to chops. And I was using a select. And what that does is it converts the data coming out of the slider into something more usable that then can be assigned from the select into something like a cross or whatever it is I want to control. Okay. So now that I have all that, I can go ahead and move these over. And I'm going to go ahead and just name the slider real quick. I'm going to call this slider um, crossfade. There we go. You can always change it up here at the top in the panel as well. And now I will go ahead and um, make this active. And now you'll see when I move my mouse over it, I get a nice little arrow. So if I just drag this onto my cross, and you see at the top of it, export to cross, cross, or I can hit uh, escape on that. And I believe I can just drag it right up onto the cross panel up in my cross settings up there and let go and export chop. And now you'll see if I activate my slider, there we go. That's how easy it is to add a slider to something. You'll see there's my output connection coming out of the top of it now. If I go full viewer strength, we can see I get a lovely crossfade going between the two. So simple to do um, and really, really useful, right? So just kind of a fun way to be able to use these interface tools. And then once they're locked and all into place, then you can just come in here and slide. And in a live scenario, I think it's a lot easier to just have big sliders and buttons right there on your in your network workplace uh, than to like have to go into like little sub panels and control tiny little sliders on the fly. Um, so, and it'll make it easy too for uh, assigning these with like MIDI devices if that's something you want to do with little knobs and switches in the future. All right, let's try a button. So let's do a, a start stop button on each of these movie files, right? All right, so let me turn off the display again just so I can see the network a little bit easier. Oh, wrong mouse button. Uh, and I'm going to hit tab. I'm going to come to comp and let's grab a button. Where are my buttons? There it is up under panels. All right, so I'm going to bring in a button. Same thing on the button. I'm going to right click and I'm going to add a select. All right. And then I'm going to go ahead and make that active. And in this particular case, I could click on here on movie file and you can see I have kind of a on off anyway, just play on off. Uh, I could really have, I could assign the start stop to anything with a binary on off uh, two part. But for this particular one, I'm going to do on off. So what I'm going to do here is now that that's activated, I'm just going to drag it up and drop it right onto the on off export chop. Let's go ahead and deploy mode here. And let's activate the button. And there we go. Button on, it's green. Button off, button on, button off. So you can see the output, the kind of zero, one. Zero is off, one is on, left, right. Um, makes it really easy. You can tell it's been act it's been sent out to that chop with that little like purple arrow downward there. And uh, again, if I deactivate this, I can call this on slash off button. 
and there we go, right? So pretty simple. I'm going to go ahead and turn both those off, select them both, copy and paste them. And I'll do the same thing up here. So let's reactivate these. And this one, um, let's go ahead and undock. Oh, no, undo that. Let's see if we can, uh, I think, yeah, I think I can go ahead and just send it to this one instead. So let's go ahead and send that export chop. You know what? It didn't like that. So I actually, let me disconnect. Yeah, I'm just going to delete. Sorry, I'm a little unfamiliar with how to undock that. So, out of this button, let's go ahead and add another select. Lock it. Click on this guy and send it over to the on off export chop. That should do it. Yep, I believe so. All right, and let's lock that guy. You know, I think I screwed up my um connections here somehow. So let's see, this guy's got to be working now. If I crossfade over to there, start, stop, start, stop, perfect. And this one is still button, but I uh, obviously messed something up on its in and out. So let me try to get that back. I'm just going to add it that back in. Clip on that movies clip. There we go. Now if I have a mix in between the two, if I activate both of these, stop, stop. So now I have stop controls for both my movie clips. I also have a crossfade between them. Pretty cool, right? So a couple of options there to play with. Uh, now something else I could do, I'll go ahead and start these back up again. Uh, I'm gonna, and I'm going to save this real quick before I crash or something. So let's call this cross fade lesson. I'll save it to my desktop. All right, so I also did a speed control with another slider, right? So let's add a speed control to this movie one file, right? Okay, so I'm going to bring in another comp here, bring in another slider. I'm going to bring it in up here. And I'll go out the right side of that and bring in another select. And let's go ahead and activate that. And if I drag that down onto the movie, you can see these are all the things I'll be able to control with the slider. Speed, cue point, loop crossfade control, step size, all these things. I'm going to do speed. And you'll see my speed has gone green there, just like my on off has gone green with that chop control out of the buttons. And now if I lock that, and let's actually make sure I'm looking at the right clip. Now I can go up to full speed, or I can slow it way down. And I have speed control. Not too bad, right? All right, let's go ahead and move these. Oh, I can't move them because they're, they're activated right now. But let's move them down, get the crossfader out of the way there. Okay. And I'm going to now add in a level um, crossfader into this guy in between, right? So let's go ahead and uh, disconnect. And out of the right of this, I'm going to add an operator. Go to my TOP, and I'm going to add a level control. Oh, let's go ahead and connect it. And I'm just going to move these guys over a little bit. And the output of that can go right there. Cool. So now obviously I could do more contrast on this clip. I could control gamma, brightness, all sorts of different stuff. Um, but I want to be able to control the level with a slider too, right? All right. So let's go ahead and grab, let me go turn off my display there for a second so you can see everything. Okay. We'll grab a slider one more time. 
I'm going to go ahead and uh, I think maybe just we'll keep it over here. And out of the right side of that, let's do a select. Cool. Activate that. And we'll go ahead and drag it onto there. And here's all the things I can control with the slider. There's lots in the levels. Um, but I want to go ahead and do contrast, I believe. There it is. Contrast, contrast. Cool. And I'll go ahead and activate that. And let's bring this back on. Now I've got a contrast control. Pretty awesome, right? So, pretty neat what you can do on these. Um, there's a lot um, within it. Um, you can, you know, decide how far you want it to go. And, uh, yeah, you can just get a lot of iterations and a lot of different ways to play with these sliders and buttons and uh, gain a lot of control over your scene with a, a unique user interface, right? So let me... Some reason here... Oh, you know what? I think I might have the... Something happened there. For some reason, my crossfade isn't quite working the way it used to. Let's turn that off. Well, it must have broke something. I still see the crossfade. Oh, you know what? Somehow my null is coming out of my level directly. Let's disconnect that. I messed that up. I must have uh, disconnected that in the process. So there we go. Crossfader is back. Bring that back down again. So you could see how you could set this up with multiple clips. You could have as many crossfades um, systems as you want. Go into different displays, maybe into the Cantan mapper. I could open up Cantan and drop this null into one mapping and then do another crossfade. Uh, pair into another mapping, however you want to do it. But this should give you some nice controls to play with in the future to have just a little bit more control over your overall scene, um, whether it's starting and stopping a clip for queuing purposes or just, you know, fading between one clip and another while you switch them out to a new movie clip in, in kind of a live scenario. So simple setup, but I'd love to see you guys uh, put some kind of crossfade or some kind of slider button control into your current project and uh, take it from there. So have fun. Let me know if you have any questions and thanks for tuning in.